Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Intro to Substance 3D Stager, the 101 course. Uh, my name is Mike Tanzillo, and I'm going to be taking you through everything that is Substance 3D Stager so that you can feel comfortable uh, to be able to create some amazing images in this tool. In this first lecture, I'm going to be showing you how to make this image right here. Uh, there's nothing that's going to be expected out of you. In fact, I don't even want you to have the software open. For this first lecture, this intro, I want you just to sit back and just absorb uh, the process. So you have a good understanding of the overview, what we're building towards, what we're trying to make, how we're gonna try and make it generally. Again, this is just like the, what are we doing type of a thing. You don't have to worry about the how you're gonna to do it quite yet. We'll get into that soon. So uh, just kind of gonna start off in here in Substance Stager. So overview, if you don't know, Substance Stager is essentially a rendering and layout tool. Uh, you can bring in 3D models, uh, either the ones that are loaded into the software itself, the asset library, or exported from pretty much any modeling software. You can bring them all into this one place. Uh, if they don't have materials already on them, you can add materials, you can add lights, uh, you can put them in a photographic backplate, as I'm going to show you, and render it out and send it over to Photoshop to do your final touch-up work. So, Substance Stager, uh, again, if you've ever used Photoshop or Illustrator before, uh, the layout is going to feel quite familiar. There's there's tools over here on the side. These are going to be our basic, you know, 3D models and different assets and stuff. We can drag and drop those into the scene. Uh, in the middle, this is going to be our main workspace. So you'll see me interacting with the objects here. I can slide them around, scale them up, things like that. Um, and then over on the right hand side, this is all of our parameter controls. This is where we're going to be using all of our sliders and, and all that fine tuning kind of stuff. Um, so for this particular project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of those coffee elements that you saw. So uh, I can either scroll down here through this list and uh, find them individually, or I can, you know, now that I know that I'm, what I'm looking for, I can use this little search bar at the top to just start searching for things. So I'll search for coffee. You can see this coffee cup with a lid, as well as this coffee bag. I'm just going to drag these two into the scene and just generally position them up where you want them. You, you saw them where I drop them is where, you know, where they were placed in the scene. So that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of materials on these objects, I'm just going to move into our next tab here. This is our materials tab. Uh, inside here, I'm going to look for a couple things. I want um, a plastic top for this, this lid. So I'll just search for plastic. Uh, this is nice hard plastic that's, that's that reminds me of like whenever I drink a cup of coffee, it always cuts my upper lip. So that's perfect. And then for the base and for the bag, I'm actually gonna be using this cardboard material. So I'll just drag and drop these on here as well. Uh, right. And for this cardboard material, uh, you'll see that the second I drag and drop it over you, all these property panels will pop up. Uh, this is very cool um, because what Substance does is they not only give you the basic controls, things like you know, color, where I can change the color of the bag, but there are additional controls that are unique to this material. So things like if you just watch the vertical lines in the bag, I can increase and decrease the wave amount. So how many vertical lines are in that bag? By default, there's there's a little bit of uh, folding in the bag, but we can increase that and then decrease that. Uh, same thing with dirt. I can add extra dirt and take that away. Um, and then additionally, there's this really, really cool one that I like called ripping. So I can increase or decrease that. And again, this isn't changing the structure of the, this isn't changing the actual model. This is like an optical illusion. This is all in the material. Um, and all because the substance uh, artist that created this uh, default material um, gave that control because it's unique to this asset. So for those purposes, we're just going to leave those as is. Um, so, okay. So now that we've got the cardboard in place, the basic plastic in place, um, now is the time we want to start uh, individualizing, adding our special components to this bag. Uh, for that, in this demo, I'm just pretending as if we have gone into Illustrator, gone into Photoshop, uh, created some a unique design, some branding, some logo work, and we really want to test it out on this product. Um, since this is all part of the Adobe ecosystem, you can use the Adobe CC libraries. Uh, the CC or Creative Cloud libraries all those are, are a cloud storage system that allows you to connect files between all the different um, all the different uh, so Adobe applications. So like if you like here, I've got some logos. Uh, this one's an Illustrator file. If you're updating 
using this in Illustrator, let's say another artist was working in Illustrator while you were working in Stager and they were designing the logo, uh, the second that they save it out, it gets loaded here in your library and then you can drag and drop it onto your scene. Once it's already on your scene, uh, you would need to re-import it if they updated it, but know that over here on the side, that is constantly being refreshed and live link between the apps. Um, and that's actually a really good use case. I actually got these Illustrator files from another artist. Um, and so that never works out really well. Okay, so you've got your you know, PNGs, AI files, whatever. Um, this is a JPEG. I can just take this and drag and drop it onto our bag. And as you can see, I've got this widget that allows me to just kind of drag it around place it wherever the heck I want. Um, it's layered in here in this material panel. Um, so I yeah, can see the graphic on top of the cardboard. So if I want to delete it, I can just delete that and I can grab another logo and drag and drop it on there. And as you can see, it kind of wraps around the side. So if I scale this up, it's kind of wrapping around the side there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and position that right in the middle. And then for the cup itself, I want to, it's, it's the same design, but only the leaves, the, the, um, logo itself in the middle has been taken away so i can just put that on there and then just scale that up so it kind of wraps around there too cool all right great so i've got those in place uh, but now the thing is is i want to continue adding coffee elements to this scene to kind of really coffify it uh but there isn't anything else like there was that in the starter assets there was that coffee pot but like i didn't i'd really want to add that into this scene so what i need to do now or what i can't do now is I uh, have the ability to go into the Substance 3D Asset Library and look for more assets. So in here, uh, the, and what the Substance 3D Library is, it's just a, uh, a huge database of materials, uh, 3D models, and light rigs that uh, Adobe's, that Substance 3D artists have created uh, and can be used in any capacity. So this is something, again, there's a team of artists in France just churning these out. Uh, so you'll often see this updated. So uh, then with your subscription, you get a, a set number of downloads. So for me, I just type in coffee into the search bar. It comes up with like, you know, things like latte art that I've used in some projects. It comes up with these beans, again, the coffee maker, grinder, French press, coffee table, cup, all this good stuff. For me in this scene, I just want to grab some coffee beans so I can download those. Um, and then for, I want to get a material for the coffee bean as well. Um, for that, it's not like, there's not like a straight up uh, coffee bean texture uh, substance in here. So what I did was I looked through it and I kind of looked at some uh, some stock images of uh, coffee beans. And what I discovered was that this, uh, that, that, that they actually end up looking like leather. So what I did was I, oh, not this one. I grabbed this cracked buffalo leather. Uh, and what it is, is it's, I, I, I have control over these cracks and like the color of the cracks and all that stuff. So I can really turn what's leather uh, into a coffee bean. And I'll show you that in a second. So I've got those downloaded. Awesome. I can either drag and drop them over from my desktop or I've already added them into my Creative Cloud library. So I can just bring in this model. Again, yeah, we've got these coffee beans and I'll just do that. At least. Um, and then we've got this uh, cracked buffalo leather as well. So place that on there. You can see that there's a little bit of seam down the side. Not a problem here because what we can do is I can go in and just switch this to tri player and then it kind of, uh, it, it wraps around much more easily so there's not, not that individual seam. Okay, cool. So now that I have this, I'm gonna try it globally too. So now that we have this, what I can do, oh, that's not great. I'll go back. Okay. So now that we have this, what I can do is I can go in and start kind of dialing in the look of that a little bit more so I can say like, Okay, cool. This is great. Uh, but what about the, those cracks? I can increase or decrease the amount of cracking on there. And then uh, what I can do is I can also go out and create a custom crack color. And so for this, I actually want to make it a little bit darker. All right, great. Cool. So now that I've got those beans in place, what I really want to do is I want to um, position those, you know, kind of drop them around the base of the cup, around the bag, all that good stuff. Normally, if you're doing that in 3D, it's a real pain in the butt because if, as you see, the beans just kind of cut through um, the bag, they cut through the ground. So like I'd have to hand position them one at a time and it's super frustrating. But inside Sager, there's this very cool tool. Uh, this is, it's this little box here, just looks like a couple of boxes uh, uh, slamming into each other. That's the collision tool. So I activate that. 
I'm also gonna go ahead and activate it on the bag itself too. So what I wanna do is then just take these five, I'll just duplicate them, push that up, duplicate again, push it up, duplicate again. Okay, cool. And since I already had the collision turned on for them, uh, they will, uh, they'll all be, you know, the collision will carry over as I duplicate it. Um, and oh, by the way, I, I didn't mention this. This is a kind of like a scene graph that just allows me, I can either select them in the preview window here or I can select them by name over there, just whatever's easy. Okay, so then now that I have collision turned on, what I can do is I can just slam those into the ground and you can see that they will just kind of stack up and pile up there. So go ahead and take those, push those back into the bag. You can see them start to pile up there. I'll kind of wrap it around the side a little bit. And then I'll just push them down to the ground. And the more that I push down, like if I lift them up again and push them down and just continue pushing down, it'll just be like gravity's taking out a longer and longer approach. So, okay, cool. So those are in place there. Awesome, amazing. I've got my pile of coffee beans, I got my cup, I got my bag. Uh, now what I wanna do is I can, I have two options at this point, because so, I've got all the elements that I want. Um, I could either continue to build a scene, I could like throw in a, a model of a table or, you know, like a ground or whatever, and I can continue to add elements to it. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna integrate this into a photographic backlight. Um, it's super easy. All you have to do is you just create this camera. Um, the camera has basic, you know, camera parameters well for all of that in a future, um, in a future demo, like control focal length, I can do depth of field stuff, but there's also this background. So what I can do is I can just drag and drop a background onto that. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to grab this. I just got this basic stock image. Again, just a simple JPEG, no metadata, nothing crazy going on in there. Um, I can drag and drop that. Actually, I'm, I can uh, swap that out if I wanted to, and you can bring in a couple if I want. So this is like at a coffee shop. So this one actually seemed more appropriate. Um, so basically, what I what I can do is um, I can. So basically what I can do is I can now uh, use a tool that exists within um, inside a substance to read that background image. Again, just a simple JPEG and integrate these 3D objects. In. So before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off my grid here at the bottom and I'm gonna activate our ray tracer. So up until now, I've been utilizing uh, Stager's real-time render engine, but now I'm gonna update it with the um, with the, the ray tracer. What the ray tracer is, it's a more realistic rendering calculation, but you can see as I rotate the camera and move it, it's really kind of staticky and then it kind of locks in. So just be aware of that. All right, jump back into the rig that camera we had before. All right, great. So now what I want to do is I want to, like I said, match the CG objects into this background plate. To do that, I just click this match image button and it'll give me three options. I can set the camera to the output size, which basically means read the photographic image and just make my my new image that same size. Uh, I can create lights. So what it does is it uses um, Adobe Sensei AI technology to read the JPEG. Again, any image just going to be from your iPhone, understand the, the basics of the lighting, and then build that lighting into the scene. And then uh, match the camera perspective. That was really cool. so. What that does is that will actually read the fall off points and like some of the visual clues within um, within that photograph and actually position everything accordingly there. So you, here you go. So now we've got this scene. It's integrated. We've got that bat. You know, we've got the cup on the table. We've got the beans wrapped around there. We've got the light coming in, looking great. Awesome. Not too much that needs to be done there. Only if I wanted to, I could go in. Uh, to my environment tab and, and adjust this lighting. If I if I would be on I think that this should be, you know, brighter. I could brighten that up. Um, I can continue to add light, but it's a, it's a really really amazing way of just like integrating something into a scene. So once I have that place, everything's looking great. Uh, now all I need to do is render it out. Render is a fancy word of just said basically saying like bake this thing out into an image. Uh, for that, I just need to go up to our render tab here at the top. Um, you'll see presets along the left hand side. I don't really mess with these too much. I, I usually it's like high if I want to go um, uh, something for the web, ultra if I want to do something for print. And then over here to the left is uh, just our um, our rendering tabs. I can say, you know, whether it's a Photoshop file or PNG, I can do both actually. 
um, and then you tell it which camera, file name, and where to put it. So I'll show you this in the future lectures. Uh, we go through rendering, but you click render, it renders it out here, and then you're able to send it directly into Photoshop. Uh, I'm gonna do the baking show thing where I've already done that. <laughs> so here is the image in Photoshop. I've added some uh, more coffee beans here than were in the original, the one I just showed you guys, but just, you get the idea. Um, but basically, the cool thing about this is that the Photoshop here is layered so that you can uh, separate the CG elements from the background. And then, we, you know, you get these uh, puzzle mats, crypto mats, ID mats, whatever you want to call them, that allow you to isolate different parts of the image. Um, so if like, I wanted to make this coffee a little bit darker, I can, I can just isolate that and then go in and make my uh, Photoshop adjustments from there. So that's pretty much it. That is the end-to-end -end pipeline in here. Um, so Stager is super simple. It's it's very easy to work with, as you'll see. Um, it's not as powerful as some other rendering software that exists out there. Like I said, I would love for this to also be able to separate things out, like the shadow passes and the specular highlights and things like that that some of the other software can do. But in terms of getting into 3D and understanding it and getting a base knowledge and your feet wet, uh, it's a great tool and it's it's really, really powerful and will allow you to do some amazing things. So that's the brief overview. In the next lessons, we're going to start getting into some of the nitty gritty of how you can navigate this space and how you can start creating your own.